All right, many thanks for staying with us. You're still live with us on Report Desk Africa, and we have just looked at the protests in Nigeria, but now we're taking a look at a broader issue in the United Kingdom, which is the riot that has been ongoing uh, following the fatal stabbing of three young girls at a dance class in the seaside town of Southport in the north of England. The UK now records what is possibly the worst unrest in more than a decade. Now, the riots that spread in cities across England and in Northern Ireland was said to have been fueled by misinformation online claiming that the suspect is in fact a Muslim asylum seeker who arrived in the UK on a boat in 2023. Thousands of counter-protesters have also taken to the streets in solidarity with immigrant and ethnic minority communities. Now, um, earlier on, Bennett had an interview with our international correspondent, Afia Hagen, and um, Bennett, uh, first off, before we talk about that, now, I, I know that the UK is known for a heavy crackdown on immigrants, mm -hmm. right? So this misinformation is the worst, it, it, and it, it came at the, the worst, worst time, time. Yeah. you know, because yeah. it's like it's further fueling the hatred. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it just goes along to remind me of, you know, the whole xenophobic attack and, and stuff like that. And this is the worst in, in about a decade yeah. that the UK has recorded. Definitely. And um, in my, my interview with Afia, um, she said, I asked her if it was unprecedented. She said yes and no. Um, it's not the first time, but like you said, it's the first time in about a decade. Yeah. Um, but over the years, um, you know, they've been seeing sparks of incidences or issues talking about um, um, immigrants. And you know, that there's, there have been those who have strongly been fighting against migration. You know, leading up, up until the time when they had the election and then brought, that, that brought in a new prime minister. So it's, it's an ongoing conversation, right. you know, and um, it's, it's quite a sad one. Um, now, speaking to Afia, I, I asked her a few questions. And the first question I asked her was about, you know, migration, what this has to do um, concerning migration. And then, you know, she, she did respond to that. Let's, let's take um, Afia's response to the first question. About affecting um, African migrants or people who are Muslim, it's anybody who's not white in the UK feels targeted at the moment. And when it comes to African migrants specifically, and um, they are scared to go out. People are scared to go out. They are scared to be on public transport. Uh, people who are Muslim are scared to wear hijabs or anything that indicates their faith in in public because they will be targeted. And you know, it's really, really scary to live somewhere where you don't have peace of mind, where you don't feel that you can move safely from one place to the other. It's summer holidays at the moment, you know, our children should be going here, they're going to clubs or going out with their friends. We don't feel that we can necessarily let our children go out in their groups of friends or, or we want to take them out. Everybody's feeling like they just want to stay at home and, and try and be safe. Well, basically, after that, after that particular question, you know, we're talking about whether or not people will still want to travel. I know, of course, Nigerians mm -hmm. will still travel whether they like it or not. <laughs> but, you know, I feel like clearly stated that it, it has risen a red flag now yeah. for migrants. And, and now there's going to be, you know, the, the issue of, of migration is going to be more spotlighted. But more... Sh I think that it should have been clarified because mm -hmm. from the information that we gathered, the, the perpetrator of that act was actually born in the UK. Yeah. So it had nothing to do with migrants. But just like you said in the beginning, it was misinformation that was mm -hmm. spread online. And I, again, I, I keep telling people that this is how far and how fast wrong narratives and misinformation can spread, um, especially in the online. online. I'll give you a quick example before we go to the second question I asked Afia. Mm -hmm. um, during the last election, governorship election in Bayelsa State, um, there was supposed to be a curfew. Um, the day before the election, the curfew was supposed to start from 12 midnight. Mm. A radio um, journalist, uh, Radio OAP, yeah. said 12 p.m. Oh, wow. That mistake alone cleared the streets of Yanagua from as early as 11 a.m. Are you serious? So it was challenging for people to get vehicles to move around. It was challenge challenging to get boats to move around. And this was not even something that was supposed to spark a riot or spark protest. But it just goes to show you how wrong or misinformation, whether it is positive or negative, yeah. can influence anything, unfortunately, negatively here. And I think that we even have the same situation mm. here because the reason the protest has either dragged or not dragged or stopped or not stopped, the confusion was just because somebody came out after the president's speech and said mm -hmm. the president has called 
of, of the, protest. the protest. Exactly. And then people are struggling. No, we didn't call off. No, they called off. The president said they didn't say. Yeah. So misinformation really does go it a really long does way. Go a long way. And that's why, you know, um, journalists are, are asked to, to strongly hold on to anything that could, miss, it could be misinforming because it can lead to anything um, that's unprecedented. Now, the second question I asked Afia, of course, we've seen our own protests mm -hmm. here in Nigeria and then we are seeing um, riots, you know, in the UK. And we've seen how we've largely talked about how it was handled by security operatives here, mm -hmm. um, which has been criticized in certain areas. And I asked her if the same thing happened over there, and we've seen the numbers of, of rioters, does she think that their security operatives will and can properly, or if they even did properly handle the issue yeah, as compared yeah. to what we had here? And here's what I feel I have to say about it. Some really effective policing, I must say, over the past 10 days, um, whether that's, you know, in Southport, in the immediate aftermath of that terrible attack, or whether that's been you know trying to control and quell the riots that have occurred or last night where you had sort of community policing going on when you had um the anti-racist anti-fascist protests but you do have a lot of officers who have been injured you know two broken legs or two broken wrists and officers um suffering from ptsd officers being punched in the face things like that um so the police service have really um had to bring their air game absolutely all holiday and leave has been cancelled and every single police officer are, who can be on duty is on duty at the moment and will remain so I think into the weekend as well. Mm. Um, she's saying that a lot of police officers even the ones who are off duty have been called back and will remain so um, even up until over the weekend. It just mm. it just goes to show that um, riots, protests are pretty much the same almost everywhere. You need every and any hand that you can have to be on deck to ensure that you quail. We saw some of the videos there. Even police officers were attacked over there too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, right? That this is this is where you put it side by side. What's happening in the UK and what's happening in Nigeria? You know, someone did mention uh, a netizen said something about the security agencies in Nigeria uh, um, approaching the protest as though it were a riot, mm. and then you would see side by side. Now, I'm not saying that what the security personnel in Nigeria are doing is similar similar to that, but somehow you can say that you know with the whole it feels like we are at war mm -hmm. in Nigeria. We don't hope for a riot, but um, I think before we came into the studio, I saw uh, a, a, a correspondent of one uh, media outlet who was also tear gas. In fact, he was being shot at mm -hmm. for being at a protest ground. And he was asking, like, this is a protest. It's not a riot. It's that Why are you being... You're not even just being defensive. You're, you're on the attacking side, you know. And looking at what's happening in the UK, it's just... It's really messy, mm -hmm. to be honest. It's really it is, messy. It is messy. Um, I have to go out to the, the, the migrants over there. You can see that. I was going to mention that. Now, you saw that the gentleman there with a brick. I call everybody gentleman. <laughs> but you saw, you saw the guy with, with a brick there. I spoke to um, a Nigerian migrant who lives in the UK, in Middlesbrough particularly, just before we leave this topic. Um, and unfortunately, we couldn't get him here on air. But he showed me um, his window. He luckily escaped harm. He was sleeping on the couch, and then a brick came flying through his window um, onto the couch where he was, he was lying down. I spoke to him and saw the video. He showed me the images, he showed me um, videos, showed me pictures, and how you know, many of them are being attacked. The children are, are scared to go out. It's summertime, they're supposed to be enjoying themselves, having fun in parks and all, but now nobody's going out. You know, Muslims are afraid to tie their hijabs when they go out yeah. because of you know, fear um, for attack. I, yeah. in, in no place in the world, is this good? Again, bringing us back to misinformation, like you said. Yeah, and, um, and one thing that I did notice as well from that video that yeah. um, has gone viral from the riots in the UK is the fact that regardless of how um, chaotic the whole situation is, the security personnel, mm -hmm. the policemen, that yeah. is the ones who are seen, mm -hmm. are not armed. Exactly. Because I want to believe that there is a standing order, well, yeah. right? And we had that, you know, on breakfast today, mm. uh, where they were saying that there's... Just, there's a, just before you continue, that's the, 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 those are the images of the gentleman I spoke to. Oh, that's wow. the rock that was throwing, thrown into the, through the window on the couch where he was lying down. He said it was just the noise in the neighborhood that got him up to look, and, to look outside to see what was going on. And that was the result. Wow. Paul, uh, uh, Theophil Theophilus Abiagom is a Nigerian migrant who lives in Middlesbrough, and that is exactly what happened to his apartment. Sorry to interrupt you, you were no, saying... No, no, it's fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I did pass my, my point across yeah. that, you know, it's... We see how the 
policemen are still handling this yeah. at least professionally, mm -hmm. right? Their lives are at risk, but they're not just pulling out guns Weapons, and shooting exactly. at people uh, exactly. for no reason. My concern now is how this is going to affect, like we said earlier, migrants, mm -hmm. especially those in the UK at the moment, because now it's no longer a situation of, oh, um, some children were killed, which is unfortunate. It's now a situation of every migrant must go. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we do hope that the government in the UK will be able to handle this um, as they have in the past, and we hope that issues concerning attacks on migrants will be a thing of the past. We'll go on a quick break now. When we come back, we'll be on the home stretch of the show, and we'll be looking into our crystal ball. Hopefully, when we look inside, we will not see protests and we will not see riots in the coming weeks. Do stay with us. <laughs> 